Let's build a box. Start out with a square piece of paper and remove a square of the same size from each corner. So here I cut out a one inch by one inch square from each corner. That then gives you four sides that you can fold up, forming your box. This will be a box that's one inch high because I'd cut one inch by one inch from each corner. If I want a taller box, I would just cut more from each corner. So here I did the same thing, but instead of cutting one inch by one inch, I cut two inches by two inches from each corner. So now when I fold it up, I get a box that's two inches tall. What's the biggest box I can build this way? In particular, what's the largest volume I can achieve? Notice there's a trade-off. The more I cut into the box, the taller it gets, but the smaller the base becomes as well. So what will give me the maximum? In order to figure this out, let's draw a picture of what's going on. I'd started out with some square. Let's just go ahead and say this is a 10 inch by 10 inch square. But if you have some other dimensions, it'll come and work out exactly the same way. And then we cut a square of the same size from each corner. Now I'm not sure how much that square should be. So for now, let's just call it X. We cut an X by X square from each corner. Then we're able to fold up these sides, having removed the four corners. The result is a box. Now we know the volume of a box is given simply by width times height times length. Well, a height is easy. The height of the box is just X. How about the width and the length? Originally it was 10, but then when we moved X from each side, so our width became 10 minus two X's. Same thing for the length. It was 10, but we moved X from each direction, making it 10 minus two X's. Hence we get volume as a function of just X will be 10 minus two X times 10 minus two X. So 10 minus two X squared times X. If we want to multiply this out, we get 10 minus 2x squared is 100 minus 40x plus x squared, all times x. So our volume is just 100x minus 40x squared plus x cubed. Now, when will this be at a maximum? We know a function achieves its maximum. A function will, will peak at its maximum when its derivative is zero. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for the derivative of this function. We're going to find v prime of x. That's not too hard, it's just a polynomial, so it ends up being just 100 minus 80x plus 3x squared. And then what we'll do is we'll try and solve when that derivative comes out to equal, when is this equal to zero? Maybe you can factor this. If you forget or have trouble factoring it, you can just go ahead and use your quadratic formula. X is equal to negative B, that's 80, plus or minus the square root of B squared, negative 80 squared, that's 6,400, minus 4AB, that's 12 times 100, or 1,200, all over 2a, 2 times 3, which is 6. What does this come out to be? Well, it's a little bit messy. 6,400 minus 1,200 is 5,200. Well, you can simplify that a little bit, plus or minus the square root of 5,200 all over 6. But a couple of things to notice. <laughs> the one is you have two possible solutions here, but one of them is clearly ridiculous. If you do 80 plus the square root of 5,200 divided by six, it's still a pretty big number. And there's no way you can have an X that big. Your, your X can be a most five, right? It can be a most half the distance. So, so there's no way that the plus is gonna be the solution. 
So, so you can throw out one of those solutions as being extraneous, as not making sense in the context of this problem, giving you really just one solution. 80 minus the square root of 5,200 all over 6. What is that equal to? I don't know. Let me get an approximation by typing it into my calculator. I have 80 minus five th uh, square root of 5,200 all over 6. That comes out to be about 1.315. Something around there. If you want to know what the, the largest possible volume then is, you can just plug that 1.315 into your equation for volume. Now, if, if you're not convinced that that really is a maximum, maybe you think that's a minimum, what you can do is you can check a little value bigger and smaller, and you can make sure it behaves in the correct way. If you pick something smaller than this, for instance, let's, let's just go ahead and do it. Here I have my, my x value of 1.315, which causes my derivative to be zero. If, if I pick something a little bit smaller than it, like if I pick an x value of one, notice what happens when you plug one into your derivative, you end up with a, a positive value, which means that, that your function was increasing before you hit 1.315. If you plug in something bigger than 1.315, like, like say two, plug two into your derivative, that's 100 minus 160, so you had negative 60 plus 12, st still, still a negative number, so you're decreasing. So sure enough, this verifies you really did have a maximum at your x equals 1.315. So if I wanted this to have maximum volume, I shouldn't have cut 1 inch or 2 inch, I should have cut 1.3 inches by 1.3 inch squares from each corner and removed it.